seen George do his stand-up routine in Vegas, I highly recommend. And if you're home watching Netflix eight hours a day like I am, I highly recommend you check out Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee with Jerry Seinfeld. That's good. He did an episode with George, and the two of them drove around the Strip, and it was uh, pretty interesting to hear Seinfeld's uh, commentary on Vegas. Don't you find it kind of weird that here you have, you know, what a funny guy, George Wallace, and Jerry Seinfeld. I, I actually believe him that Jerry probably does not have a lot of friends. He's, he's an introvert. Don't you find that interesting? The talent that a Jerry Seinfeld has, and by the way, I met him before, and he's absolutely right. It was a very awkward interview. He did. Uh, I interviewed Jerry Seinfeld. He was doing the red carpet of the Andre – is when Andre Agassi did the, his big charity event at MGM Grand, and – I got about five minutes with Jerry, and it was the most one of the most awkward interviews I've ever done in my life. Like, I'm asking him questions, and he was giving me this blank, weird stare. And I'm, I'm pretty good at doing interviews. I'm asking about the charity, and I'm asking about why it was important for him to be here. And he just looked at me, oh, well, it's important because you know, I'm friends with Andre. Like, he just gives me weird answers, and it was just strange. He's, He's um, a weird guy. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his work, but everything I've seen of him, in that, whether it be on the Netflix show or anything else, um, he really does – Tend to hate people, I think. I don't think he'd even make any. He's like Larry David. Yeah, I don't I... even think he's even hiding that fact. Larry David. He only he says in his show, yeah. the Netflix show, he says I only get along with other comedians. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, I believe that. I just think he's he's very awkward and just doesn't like regular people. I've had some weird interviews with uh, comedians. Chevy Chase is a weird dude too, but I met Larry David, and I've always wanted to meet this guy. And he was just like the same guy in Curb Enthusiasm. So I'm I'm doing an interview with him, and he, and he looks at me, and he goes, "Who is this for?" What is this for? What is your outlet? Like, and he was serious. I thought he was joking. He really wanted to know what I was doing and why I was asking him questions. And then I asked him a, a few questions about the Knicks, and, and he got angry. And I, he was just—he was a very agitated individual. And that's why I'm saying that's why Curb Your Enthusiasm is so successful because Larry doesn't have to act. That is actually the kind of guy he is. He's—he's he's a funny guy. He's brilliant, but he's also a. a uh, neurotic. He's uh, nuts. You also think about, you know, uh, I kind of we're going off on a tangent here, but whatever. You, you also think about people like a Seinfeld, like a like Larry David, or any comedian that struggled to make it at first, and all the doors they got slammed in their face, and all the the comments that they got from people when they were trying to make it, and now they've made it. Now they're the biggest comedians on the planet. You can kind of maybe pay people back a little bit for that, and you don't have to care what people think. You've got all the money and success in the world. Who cares what people think? Oh, it's true. And it's so, true. and not everybody thinks like that. I mean, there, you know, there's people that, you know, uh, that are you know, probably George Wells is probably the nicest guy 40 years ago. He's probably the same as he is now. Yeah. But I think there is something to that about how money affects you, right? No question. I mean, you know, but a, a lot of these comedians are introverts. A lot of these comedians are brilliant at what they do, but a lot of them have some mental problems, and a lot of them are are not normal. I mean, I don't know what normal is, but uh, a lot of these comedians no, are a, just a lot. Of, a lot of entertainers in general are very eccentric, yeah. just just by nature. I mean, especially actors. I mean, think think what you have to do to actually act. You have to pretend to be a different person to the point where an audience actually believes that you're that person, and they pay to watch you be that person. I mean, what you have to be in a totally different mental mindset to do that. So yeah, entertainers in general and performers in general. Are, are they, they tend to be a little crazy, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, no question. But certainly, I, I'm sure we all would agree, uh, George Wallace is one of the best in the business. And, Outstanding. And speaking of actors, not to be a Debbie Downer, but a legendary actor, Brian Dennehy, has passed away at the age of 81. Oh, no. Um, Brian Dennehy. I remember the first Rambo? He was in the first Rambo. God, I love that movie. He, he was, was in, in uh, C Cocoon. He was in Tommy Boy. He was Tommy, Tommy, yes, Tommy, Tommy, right. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy's dad. He played Bobby yeah. Knight on that ESPN movie. Uh, yeah, big, one of, big Tom Callahan, My that's right. favorite Sylvester Stallone movie, uh, and I'm not a big fan of all the Rambos. I thought the last Rambo was absolutely awful. But I always watched that first Rambo because I thought it was incredible. And Dennehy... Am I pronouncing his name right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. He played yeah. such a great role in that movie. He was like the, the, the head of police there, and he played such a great jerk in that movie. He's such a great actor, and it was such a great, you know, uh, just at the tandem between him and Sylvester Stallone in that first Rambo was real. And I think you could make the, obviously the, uh, obviously uh, the boxing movies made Sylvester Stallone's career, obviously. But that first Rambo was so good. And I still watch that movie because it's an older movie, but the acting was actually really good. The script was unique. And then you see all these Rambos afterwards, and I just they're just not very good. But he, he was such a great actor. He's Dan fantastic. Dennehy died yesterday in Connecticut. 
Natural causes, in case anyone's thinking no, coronavirus. No COVID. Okay. Uh, natural causes. There will not be an official autopsy. Well, and he was 81 years old. 81. He was up there. Yeah. But uh, lived a pretty damn Which, good again, life. Yeah, exactly. If you're if you're 80 to 90 and you have success like that, you you lived an outstanding yeah. life. Whether it's no in question. business or entertainment or what, if you have grandkids, if you know if you have money saved up, whatever. It's if you have an estate. Well, like, it's you, different. You lived an outstanding it's, life. It's different than when you hear about a Chris Cornell taking his own life right. uh, or when you hear about a Robin Williams, it's different when you hear about a young actor that, that goes through some sort of tragedy, whether it's suicide or an accidental death, it's, you know, it, it's more difficult. It's always,